Traylon Burks, wide receiver out of Arkansas, six foot two, two hundred and twenty five pounds, heaviest in the class, that, by the way. That coffee smells good. It does smell so good. Uh twenty two and a half years old, ran a four five five forty, which is really good for a guy of his size. Thirty three inches. Is it? I mean it's good enough. I got listen, let me talk about the really hyping projected. him up because you like him. I got some stats to back up his speed and, and besides his film. Okay. Four five five forty yard dash. 33 inch vertical, 122 inch broad jump, a 7.28 three cone. Um, this, he also had some carries in college, coming off a year where he had 66 catches. He tested out poorly, right? Yeah. Let's just say compared let's, to expectations. Yes. All right. Compared to expectations, compared he to tested expectations out. is the perfect yes thing. Come off a year, 66 receptions, 1,104 yards, 11 touchdowns. Also carried the ball 14 times for 112 yards and a touchdown. This is a guy who lined up in the slot 77% of the time. Now, he remained like the slot receiver there, but he, he, ran, a, he ran a good amount outside too, about, about a third of the time there. Um, this is somebody who is really good outside, really good outside. Dominated Alabama this year, eight catches, 179 yards, two touchdowns. And his after-catch ability is tremendous. He's tough to bring down. Average 8.6 yards. At, so this is, this is from PFF. He averaged 8.6 yards after the catch per reception while breaking 24 tackles on 115 receptions since 2020, while also catching all 21 of his catchable vertical route targets for 792 yards and touch, 10 touchdowns. That's from PFF. The rest, this is from me. Moves well. In the open field, from me. Uh, real da- he's real dangerous, close to the line. Um, this is somebody that you just want to get him the ball, right? But he also has really good bursts and speed that you wouldn't expect from a guy of his size. So he tested well, but he had a 1.54 10-yard split, which shows how good of his, his acceleration is. And, it, and the tape showed all of this to me. Um, great at contested catches. Uh, his size, good body control, big catch ra- radius, consistently beat defenders on good angles, barely got caught from behind. I saw a tweet from uh, Angelo uh, at uh, Angelo underscore fantasy, does really good prospect work. He tweeted out that Burks reached 22.6 miles per hour on that one play versus Alabama, the fastest speed achieved in all of college football during the 2021 season. Well, I, I don't think I actually saw that Alabama, Alabama game. Um, was it a long... Was it a long reception, long run? That's how fast DK Metcalf ran down the sideline when he was chasing no, down Buda no, Baker. But Traylon Burks, was that a long run? Yeah. The one yeah. where he achieved that? Yeah. That doesn't surprise me because I think he's a guy that has build-up speed. You didn't watch the Alabama game? I'd actually, I, I don't know why. I don't it's know how I missed It's his best game. He okay. literally just dominates him. Yeah. Um, he's a guy that has build-up speed. I think, I don't know. I don't agree that he has like great short area burst. That's I don't think that is his game. I think a lot of the times when he's getting the ball – close to the line of scrimmage, if if his path is impeded, he has a hard time, I think, making a guy miss. I think he he, he can outrun some guys and get to the edge and stuff like that. He's not like a miss make a miss make a guy miss in the open field type of run after the catch. I think he's an outrun type of guy. Yes. And I think you know, so I think the the numbers can be deceiving. And I think people you can paint the wrong picture of a guy when you just say he's, he's really good after the catch, because I think there's certain things he's good at after the catch and certain things I think he's going to struggle at, especially at the NFL when, when guys are better tacklers um, that, that maybe he, I you don't, don't know. see AJ Brown when you see him. No, I don't. That's the comp I had. I think AJ Brown is, is, is he, he's more explosive in a small space. And and AJ and Brown stronger. was much more nuanced, I yeah. think, than Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks is more raw. He's raw. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned the Alabama game, which I watched that game. He played fantastic in that game. Great game. But you also had the LSU game and the Georgia game, which were mm-hmm. two of the other better defenses he went against. Four catches for sixteen yards, three catches for ten yards. So he did have some really explosive games, and then he had other games where like that's so good. Where'd where'd you go? Like like what happened there? Uh so <laughs> It's, it's going to be interesting with Traylon Burks. His score ended up being a little bit lower for me than I would have expected coming in. And part of that is just because his his route running is is fairly poor. It's rough. Um, yep. You know, he, he doesn't do anything special off and, the line of scrimmage. And I think off the line of scrimmage, how can you evaluate off the line of scrimmage? He, was li- mostly, he yeah. lined up five yards deep. You know what I mean? They, exactly. They, they hid him because he's not good at getting off the line of scrimmage is my... X, it, that's what I'm guessing. 
I don't know that for sure because I barely saw. It's hard to evaluate that. He, it is, and, but and, but I I can tell you this: what I saw is he doesn't have great change of directions, uh, uh, skills. So I don't I don't think he could beat the jam all that well, right. very effectively anyway. I think he could with with hand fighting. I just don't know that he has that technique I don't, yet to be able to do some of that. Right. I, I, that I don't know. The one thing that was puzzling to me, and yeah. this is this is more uh, narrative driven than than anything else. So take that for what it's worth. I was very surprised he didn't run the 40 yard dash at his pro day after people being disappointed by his four, five, five compared to people thought he would run low four, fours, maybe even in the four threes, why he wouldn't want to prove people wrong. If you, if he actually was better than that. So I think if he ran a hundred meters, you would be, Oh my gosh, he's really fast. Right. And, and but it's more build up speed it's, than like it's build up quick, speed. Quick he burst. does not have quick twitch. He's not a quick twitch type of guy in my in my in my opinion. What I'm seeing on tape, so it's he's a he's a very interesting and I think hard prospect for me to nail down because there's so many red flags going up as far as what I saw at the combine, the numbers that we got from him on the at the combine. But then you do see flashes of good stuff on tape where he's, you he's, do. Out, he's out running guys. He's, he's going up. He doesn't have great vertical, but he's tall enough. He's big enough. He's physical long enough. enough arms. He's yep. got long enough arms to come down with, with balls that are, that, mm-hmm. you know, quote unquote above the rim. So there are good things that you see on film, but I just, I'm having a hard time piecing it all together and I'm still not done done with my evaluation here on him. I'm going to have to dig in some more like, like obviously I didn't get a chance to watch the Alabama game, which Mm -hmm. is a big game. Um, But it's, it's just, he's, he's sending up flags that I don't like to see in guys that I'm going to be sending a high round draft pick. And I think that's the biggest thing for me. If this was somebody that we were talking about at one, eight, one, nine Mm -hmm. all day, all day, you see what could be, but if I'm taking him, you know, in, in one QB, we're talking top three or four ish pick. That's that's tough for me. That's a lot of risk. Here's here's how I'll put it in perspective. If you, you mentioned AJ Brown, do I see AJ Brown? I I see closer to Doriel Green Beckham than I see AJ Brown, and that's and that was a lot of upside in Doriel Green Beckham, but he completely flamed out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I see a, I see a lot more of shades of that than I do. AJ Brown, who I automatically we fell yeah, in I remember love with we loved him, yeah, and and, and wanted to, I saw a huge upside. See, I went AJ to Brown. I went to his tape with um same thing of like wow right after con- like a lot of negative press going mm-hmm. towards Traylon Burks, and I came away way more satisfied. Like I I, and I understand the you know the red flags with the you know his, the, his separation you know the short intermediate areas where it's a little bit harder for him to get in out of his break so that like the defenders can stay with him and, like stay a little bit closer attached to the hip and uh you know his three cone kind of showed that a little bit as well but when I'm watching the tape he's the kind of guy that's like I could throw some of that stuff out the winner and it's like this guy's just a football player mm-hmm. like this guy just wins like he's really really good at at getting the ball in his hands and making things happen so for me. I, I get really excited about him because when we talk about again fancy football points, that potential, he offers so much upside to your dynasty roster. Where like this, this is where I started to get salvaged. And you're right, and Garrett Wilson's so much like so much safer than Traylon Burks, so much safer. Which why I would probably take Garrett Wilson ahead of Traylon Burks. Mm-hmm. I would take Garrett Wilson one hundred times out of one hundred, not even ninety nine. Like yeah. that, that I feel that much. There's that much separation between these two prospects in my eyes. See, and that to me, it's not. They're not that, that not that much separation. So Matt and I are closer on that one, um, and I think Jared's going to be a little closer to you, Rich, on this. But I, I have, you know, I mentioned before Garrett Wilson seventy nine point four. I actually have Traylon Burks at a seventy six point two five. So currently, and this is without uh, Drake or Alave being in there. Uh, I have him at wide receiver four currently. And I think, see, Alave is somebody who's like, again, Alave is like a safe player, right? Like mm-hmm. he's at like uh, low end wide receiver two, mid range wide receiver two. Like Burks offers that upside. I just, you know who he reminds me of, honestly? LaVisca Chenault. That's a lot of what Traylon I Burks. Oh, I hated it. I, 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 I think, did not like I think Traylon State. Burks is a little bit better, but like, I don't think that they're that too like too far dissimilar. Yeah, and I, think, I went in. I went in a little bit like, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna put guys ahead of them, and I still have to do Jamison Williams. I still got to do Drake London, but 
I'm telling you, just from watching this guy play football, like if, if I threw everything out the window and I'm watching him play football mm-hmm. and you show me all these other receivers, I'm like, I want that guy on my dynasty roster right there. Like I, if you're, if I'm watching him all at the same time, like I'm going to see him do things and I'm like, that guy is going to score me a lot of fancy football points. Yeah, and we, I think if you watch the highlight film, I'd fall in love with the guy, but it's all the other stuff in between that sure. I yeah. have a hard time with. There's definitely flashes of upside that make you say, wow. And Nick Whalen, I think, had a really good comp, and he, he comped him to Demarius Thomas because he was a little bit of a of a project coming out. You know, he had that physical profile, but he was a little more of a project because he had to refine his skill set as a route In runner. Georgia Tech. Or, or, yeah. Never re- throw the ball. release. And then that's the same thing with Traylon Burks for me. I have him pretty low on his route running. I mean, if you look through his tape and try to find, like, where he's actually running – a comeback or like any sort of route tree. No, you can't really find it. This, it's, he, he's it's playing, crossing routes. It's slants. I don't want to, I don't want to say like he's playing, he's playing pickup ball out there. Like for, for real, I like, think that was the offense because yeah. their quarterbacks suck. They yeah, could not sure. get him the ball. He had Felipe Franks thrown to him and then for KJ Jefferson career, yeah. this year. They're both very in, inconsistent passers. And I think it's more of a product of that situation because putting them in the slot and that offense allowed them to get him the get their best playmaker, the ball, more more consistently they're closer to the quarterback i get it and and jet sweeps and, and they're getting him the ball quickly and close to the line of scrimmage i i don't know that that was putting him in the best position to look good because i don't think he's good at making people miss like if if the play wasn't blocked right and he didn't get uh kind of ahead of steam going i think he, he struggled and i think he looked bad in those situations so i do agree that there are systems i think and probably colleges that he, if he would have chose a different college and it would have been in a different system, they could have made him look much better and highlighted his, uh, I guess, assets they, a lot better. They did a little bit of that this year. I mean, before before this year, he lined up in the slot seventy seven percent, like all the time. Mm-hmm. And this was the first year they really lined up outside. He was way more efficient this year. He averaged five point six yards per route from the outside this year compared to previously, where he's inside the slot, averaging two point six one yards per route, which. Makes, again, may, way more sense, bad quarterback play. This is a player you just want to get the ball in his hands because right. he makes things happen. Right. Definitely at the collegiate level. He's so big. Right. He's obviously going to look a little bit better some against some of these defensive backs, but he's still playing the SEC. Hold on. But before you move on past that point, is he a college player that was just kind of better than the people around him so he didn't have to do anything else? Like, I feel like that's kind of, that's another red flag. Like but he also has really good hands. Was he just good enough to win without refining his game? Like at all at the college level. That's that's a, now that's, that's a, a, a note I'll listen to and say, okay, that's a big red flag. That's a there's red a flag question. to me. I think there's a valid question in that because it's a very valid question. Because you see it on the field how fast he is. Yeah. But he didn't go to the combine and perform, and half the combine is a technical there's right. a technical aspect to running the forty. So why didn't you run the forty Especially as fast a, as you could have? In yeah. a year where people seemingly ran faster than ever. And Matt, yeah, and Matt so, said that right away during the combine. He's like, Listen, I looked at his pitcher, I looked at his body type, and I saw his forty, and it's like Dude, do you even care? Right. Like that's there, Matt said that that day. And there are grumblings of possible weight issues at Arkansas, which you don't want to hear. And no. and I don't want to get into that because I don't know that. Yeah, for and a fact, by all reports, he's a good kid and a hard worker. Like, Four point student. Yeah. yeah. So it, this is, we're not trying to like have defamation of character here at all. You know, we're trying to decide where we're going to invest our dynasty at. Exactly. Like, well, our dynasty stocks. So. And for him, it's a big question because he falls at the top. Like yeah. it's either. So you're probably looking at. Anywhere from one four to one seven in for Traylon Flex. Burks. It, no, not even super flex. Like in a one QB, even. I, I Brees Hall for me, like it'd be so. Say I think Brees Hall is the only sure thing right now. So for me, depending on your draft, if I could go anywhere, if I, else. if I have to have my dynasty rankings right now without including Drake London and Jameson mm-hmm. Williams, I think be, he, I think he's saying he can go he can go higher. Than could, no, he could. Oh, right? he, he could go. Sure. He can go one oh two. He can go one two. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he definitely can go one two. I mean. If Traylon Burks ends up on the Packers at pick 28, mm-hmm. he's going 1-2 in some drafts. It's, oh. it's that simple. I think there's a possibility he falls out of the first round. I think there is possible. And that's what's weird. If you watch, if you look at mock drafts, he NFL goes anywhere draft? from 16 yeah. Yeah. The, I, I think the NFL still, draft. I think, the second round. Yeah. I, think you're, I think you're dead on. I think you could be right. Which, which is then almost a little bit scary because one thing you were hoping for for the bump was him taking in the 20s there by a good team. If he's taken at... 
30 something. Now we're talking about the lower end. But teams it, again. it does and, only and take a one red flag. It and does it, only it, take one. Yep. And see, Andy Reed, you know, multiple, like it, it could, it could happen. Dallas, I could see yeah. Jerry Jones. Oh yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot of mocks for him going to Jerry Jones. Cause Jerry Jones is an Arkansas <laughs> guy and their biggest booster. So there's a lot of That's mocks. That's the high school too. In <laughs> there's, Arkansas. He's there's number a, one player. There's a out. lot of uh, mocks for him there. So, and, but you know what? I'll use that information uh, for me. <clears throat> It come to the next level. It kind of same thing like a, a prospect we all loved back in the day, Kelvin Harmon, right? Like we loved Kelvin Harmon coming out as a prospect. We thought he worked the sideline. We thought he was a really good NFL uh, rookie prospect. For a second, I thought you meant Kelvin Benjamin. I was like, no, I did not no, love him, no, but he does kind of remind me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then all of a sudden, Kelvin ben, Kelvin Harmon goes in the sixth round NFL draft. You're like, oh, what what was I missing? Right. So if Traylon Burks falls out of the second round. That, that's going to be David Bell this year, by the way. Okay. First round, you mean? Kelvin Harmon. So he falls out the first six, round of the NFL draft. draft. So yep. people somebody really liked before, yep. but then like ends up on day three somehow. With yep. how many people need that. receivers in this in this draft? Like how many people <clears> need <throat> receivers? If Traylon Burks falls out the first round, that's enough to tell me as a red flag that all that thirty two teams essentially there's not a lot of people on first round picks pass on them. Then okay, and then Jamison Williams goes and, in the first round. Drake and, London goes in the first right. round. Like okay, I I might feel a little bit more comfortable taking those guys. And here's the thing that. I mean, obviously, we're all looking at the same sort of games that, you know, evaluators are looking at, blah, blah, blah. They have more information. But they they have behind-the-scenes information that we'll yes. never we'll have. We'll never have access yeah. to. So you, that's what we would assume to be. So the, the reason the why case. he would slip. Yep. So the, and then, and that's those are the kind of things you have to pay attention to when a guy is perceived to go higher and there's no real reason for him to have not gone higher. You have to think that something has happened behind the scenes or there's some sort of issue that we just don't have the information on.